so we can move on to uh, what I think is the most primed up team ready to go. And I know I took a flyer and I took a chance on the fact that St. Louis would be Colorado, but holy shit, do they look ready? They look ready to hoist the cup right now. They are just nuts. Yeah. Uh, we've been blessed with some tremendous uh, goaltender performances so far in the playoffs. We've got another one Tuesday's late game. Jordan Bennington picked up right where he left off in the first round. Single-handedly kept the Blues in this game. Stopped 51 of 54 shots. Uh, but thanks to a perfect Gabriel Landeskog screen on a Josh Manson, yeah, Josh Manson shot, shot in OT. He didn't see the 54th, and Colorado escaped with a 3-2 win. Uh, even though Colorado played their asses off, completely dominated, outshot the Blues 54-25. to I say escape because... Ben was so damn close to stealing that game. Uh, unbelievable performance. But do you think he's going to be that much of a difference or is Colorado just going to smoke them? Hail uh, I, I think that was similar to the one game that uh, Nashville ended up putting a fight and bringing it to overtime against them. Let me, let me pump the brakes there, actually. Barube is a very good coach. I think that they will make adjustments. He was pretty irate in the post-game press conference. Kept it together, but he got asked a few catch uh, questions where he was just very short winded with them. Uh, Face offs. They were awful. They were awful in the, uh, between JT Comfer, Kadri, and Landis Gog, They were 19 and three on draws. Well, each of them were over 80%. So when you're giving away the puck to a team like That's that off ideal. the hop, it's not ideal. And the only way they were able to win draws was when they were throwing O'Reilly on the ice. So they had to keep throwing them on there. Robert Thomas was getting chewed up in the face-off circle. You know, he's a hell of a player, but maybe that's one tool that he hasn't developed in his bag. So all of a sudden, you're having one of your best centermen uh, in O'Reilly. He's having to be a repairman. He's having to go take defensive zone draws. So, And considering Colorado's so good at face-offs, if he's going 50%, that means 50% of the time he's starting off his shifts in his own end getting eaten alive where he's got to spend 45 seconds playing defensive zone against this fucking juggernaut. And when you have these waves of offense coming at him, there's no way they're going to be able to do it. So the ice was completely tilted the whole game. They weren't able to get any type of sustained pressure in the offensive zone to relieve any pressure from their own back end. So they just had no gas in the tank to, to get any type of anything going. So without Bennington, that game's 10 fucking one. Um, there was also a couple questionable goals at the end of that game. I don't know how you guys felt about them. The one hold in the corner where Devon Taves got a stick wrapped around and then also the high stick on Shen. Now Shen ended up high stick and I, I, I don't remember who it was, but the guys spun him around and his head was about three, like probably two feet off the ice. So it wasn't a high stick. It was a low stick. So but tons of people were messaging me talk, everybody being like, this is a bullshit call. Why are you laughing? Just calling it a low stick is funny to me. It wasn't a high <laughs> stick. It was a low stick. Like my low voice. Yeah. But but that ended up – that ended, they ended up scoring on the power play, and that's what pushed it to overtime. But uh, they would not be denied. Manson comes up huge. Landis Cog was a beats, beast. They were so good on puck retrievals all night long. They had a crack at it. They ended up retrieving it below the goal line. Kadri over to Landis Cog, up top, low to high. He does the pump fake finds the screen, zips it up top, game over, signed, sealed, and delivered. If they bring that type of effort against St. Louis, they're going to be out of the series in four games. Yeah, I mean, amazing to hear a guy who picked St. Louis all of a sudden after one game say it's it could be over, but I don't think you're that far off. Now, here's the problem. You get an effort like that from Bennington. At the same time, you have an off night from McCarr, who kind of was at fault in the first O'Reilly goal. It made a little bit of a weak play, and it got deflected back to O'Reilly. So you got Makar having an off night, which isn't really ever going to happen again. Maybe at least not next game. He's not going to have two bad games. I'm not even saying he was bad, but he wasn't his usual dominant self. And then also, Colorado has so many different weapons that the Knights, the big dogs are off. It doesn't even matter. This Niskushkin, Niskushkin, Holy shit. Let me remind everyone, too. In 2018-19, he didn't score a goal the whole fucking season for Dallas. And Colorado brought him over, and he had two solid years. Then this year, he went off. Now, granted, he's playing on one of the top lines. He had 25 goals this year, just under a point per game. And now he's a truck. He skates. He's one of the fastest skaters in the league. He's made a huge difference. He does a great job in game one. 
Landis Skog on the OT winner, it was a shift you should show every young hockey player ever that it wants to have, play with drive and play with passion like a captain does. He, he wins a battle. He gets the puck back. He then gets the screen. Manson has a hell of a fake shot and then gets one through. Uh, Bednar talked about Manson after the game and talked about how big of a difference he made and how great of a game he had. And that's one where Joe Sackick after is like, that, that was a great trade. I'm telling you, you trade for a guy like that and he has one OT winner, it's like, holy fuck, that trade was worth it. Maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but you guys know what I mean. He made an impact, and he's a beast of a defenseman. And um, the other thing I wanted to mention was even the shots being that, that you know, lopsided, I think it was 2-1, to one basically. The scarier thing is the scoring chances. It was like 39-11. to 11. It was it was it was worse than the shots. The actual grade A chances too. Grade A a, chances after the second period were seventeen to one. I mean, what the fuck are you gonna do with that, (laughs) St. Louis? How how are you supposed to come back from that? Krug is such a big loss right now. Yeah, not having him is such a killer to get out of your own zone. I know I said that last episode. Uh, Shout out to Bennington. You got to start him again. Unfortunately, of all the amazing saves, I think the the. The, the goal that put Colorado up 2-1, to one, Girardi probably liked back. He kind of sucked that one in. I think it went 5 hole. But, I mean, you can't really chirp a guy for one bad goal in a game when he makes 50 friggin' saves. But Colorado's at a... Oh, they are at a different level well, than every and, other team. They and, haven't and you, lost yet. They've only... They've only haven't been leading a game for 10 seconds, it felt like. Well, and you said, like, a, a quote-unquote quote off night from a car is like basically 90 percent of the league if if you look at the, the defenseman that's their best game of the season is a, an off night from a car you then have gerard you have taves you have byram those three guys are mobile active okay. guys who can get up the ice like gerard like he was fucking buzzing through the neutral zone like you saw on his goal he was the one who generated the offense by walking it through the neutral zone he ended up passing it over to landiscock who ended up dumping it in so it's like they just have these waves and waves and waves. Another thing that uh, Barubi was not happy about was their line changes, which were absolute dog shit too. So all and in by all, the way, the Cairo goal was because of a bad line change on the yeah. PK by Colorado. Right. So Barubi's upset about a, a thing with St. Louis, and it was actually a problem for Colorado, and they still won. So everyone's in one play in Colorado. Whoever wins Calgary, Edmonton, they're gonna fucking smoke. It doesn't matter. Maybe maybe Tampa can beat them. I don't know. They're a fucking wagon, dude. Who the hell is going to beat the Avalanche? Yeah, Look I'm at regretting. this team. I'm, I'm regretting my St. Louis pick right now. <laughs> um, I was being a bit of a hero. I was trying to be a reverse mush again. Um, all right, anything else you want to touch on? Uh, yeah, Ryan O'Reilly had a sixth of the playoffs. He's got a goal in five straight games. And like we said, for all the talk about Makar and Taves, it was Gerard Mansu combined for two goals and an assist. In OT, the Avs outshot him 13 to nothing. Uh, they hit five posts during the game. And the Avs have now beat the Blues in eight straight playoff games. So basically, next game is the, the Blues season, I would say. I mean, you go down 2 nothing to a team like that, you, you probably toast. So I have to throw a little Yeah, how out. are you going to win four out of five against them? Yeah, exactly.